strongest condition we, we have, uh, which is the non density okay? Um, so let's say in that case, it becomes a very strong condition. So how it becomes equivalent to LICQ somehow for conjecture programming. However, it's still, uh, at least in our opinion, uh, uh, it, it doesn't look that bad, uh, even with, that, with this, with this con, right? Um, however, when we write down this condition, the same approach for nonlinear semi-field programming, and now from now on, I'm gonna just talk about nonlinear semi-field programming. Uh, we have noted that it's, that it's very weak. Somehow. It's very, sorry, it's very strong. It's very strong. Huh? It's very naive. Somehow. Huh? And I will try to explain that here. So uh, let me switch, please, to, to now to semi-definite because it's needed to, to explain the, the drawbacks of this, of this condition. Semi-definite programming, as I said before, you minimize a, a smooth function and you have here typically one single SDP constraint, uh, and, but G is smooth as well. But the issue here is that you are then you you can be uh, interested into work with uh, interested in, in working with uh, with uh, agent values and agent vectors. Uh, as you see here, you can denote uh, lambda the agent values and u one to m the agent vectors. Uh, and it's natural somehow to try to work with them and recreate the, 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 the approach before. But there is a problem. Uh, uh, of, there is first uh, note that active sets here, here are related to the kernel of the matrix, right? Active set is the kernel of G of X star. Uh, but that kernel can have can have a uh, dimension greater than one, all right? If you have dimension equal to one, it is known that the associated gen value and the associated, uh, sorry, is, is this non in order. So it's increases, yeah, this one. So if you, if you work with the kernel and if the kernel has dimension one, it is known that, of course, it's going to say that the first agent value here is simple, so it has multiplicity equal to one. And in that case, this guy and this guy are smooth. Right? So in that case, you can work with them and use our naive approach. Right? But if not, if the dimension of the kernel has a uh, is greater than one. Uh, of course, you have multiple agent values, and those functions are not as most anymore. Neither the agent vectors, uh, um, and in that case, you cannot, for instance, talk about gradients of that. And it's not easy to extend the the constant run, even the naive version. So, how since if you have followed what I said. How this condition, this naive condition, holds for SDCP? Okay, it's as follows: If you don't have kernel, of if the kernel, uh, uh, um, or if the kernel has dimension greater to one, that's what it means because R is the rank is here, is the rank of the of the um, of G of X star. In that case, it is just non -denacy. Okay, so in two big cases, it's just non C, which I repeat, is like the LICQ. So it's a strong condition. But in the only in the only case where you have some progress is when the kernel has dimension one. That's the same, it's another way to write it down. And in that case, you can derive, as I told before, you can derive the, the, the largest agent value. So in this case, sorry, the smallest agent value. You have an explicit formula for that. Um, and somehow you can write this constant run condition in this equivalent way. I'm not going to enter into it, but believe me, that is a very simple way to write down that condition that the gradient is, uh, 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 the gradient is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, has constant run and every proof of the star. Uh, uh, okay, it's a condition that works, of course, but as I said before, it only differs 
it only differs from a standard emergency when the rank of G of E star is M minus one or equivalent, equivalently when the kernel of that matrix is uh, as dimension one. Um, so, okay, it's not, in that sense, we were not very happy, but uh, it's a condition that works, of course, but we start to think in another more uh, general condition. So as I said before, I just want to talk about facial one, sequential is for another talk. And um, what we have done is first to think and, and try to give a geometric interpretation of constant run, even for nonlinear neurons. And we achieved that in a very smart way. And this is the, uh, it's as follows. Uh, first, we, we note a very trivial fact that if you take any subset of, or let's say the dimension of, of when you are working in inequalities, let's say, uh, uh, and you have the, this subset has a one-to-one -one correspondence with the faces, that's the key point, of the, of the positive octal, right? Given by this, expression. Now, I can say an example, for instance, the vertex here is equal to take, uh, uh, this is two dimension, of course, is equal to take one, two, and three, right? If you take the octagonal to the space generated by the three uh, uh, canonical bases, the first, the second, the third, you obtain the vertex. This, let's say, blue one or purple one here is this one. Before Note that this purple one is to take only this this the g equal to two, right? And so on. All the all the faces of the positive ontal can be can be written down by a set of faces. So with this in mind, uh, we can define a kind of reduction where only only inequality matters. Huh? Equality is how as I explained at the beginning uh, are not so important for constant run CPU. So um, where in the reduction you reduce to the active constraint. Uh, let's say that you have S, uh, S uh, uh, dimension for that. Uh, and you know that for any phase of the, let's say, reduce space, uh, the orthogonal has this form where, where R is a phase of the, uh, uh, the space of course where inequalities uh, belong. And as I said before, all the phases has the form of the span for this one-to-one -one correspondence of the uh, canonical basis for, for some of them, for some subset of indexes and for all the, let's say, associated with the uh, equality, right? Actually, if, if this, if this is uh, bother you, please don't take it into account. Equality is just, just let's say, complicated notation, but not really. Um, so we have this clear uh, equality. And then when you compute by simple, uh, a simple computation gives you that when you derive this function and you apply to a, a particular uh, uh, to the orthogonal uh, space of a face, uh, you immediately obtain the span of, let's say, this product, transpose of the derivative of the canonical base, right? And that's by the very, for all the that you are, that define the, that define the, the, the face, right? And then again, this is by, by simple computation, it's just identify the gradients of. Uh, that are here, so a, a subset of gradient here, and all the grades of the qualities. Right? So, the dimension of this space coincides with the rank of what we typically use to define constant rank CQ. Hmm? So, th this, is, this is actually the proof huh, that we have found a new geometrical characterization, which, which as far as I, uh, as we know, is new for nonlinear programming of constant run CQ. Well, relaxed constant run CQ, but I mean, this is relaxed is the, is the one that matters. 
Um, and it says that if you construct this function, capital G here, this satisfies the, the Roland constant rank. If and only if there's an error code, there's always an error code, such that for every phase of this reduced space of how the dimension of that set remains the same, right? And this is the first time that a geometrical characterization of constant rank is given for nonlinear parameter, right? But also open the door for extension. Uh, so with this extension, we can try to somehow uh, provide um, uh, provide. Uh, 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 let's say ideas or somehow uh, to to extend some of the tools used here. And one tool was the reduction to reduce the active constraint, right? That was a key to construct this function, to construct this function capital G. And for that, we we needed to uh, uh, reduce the active constraint. So how we do that in nonlinear SDP? As I told you before, I'm going to talk about nonlinear SDP from now on, but this could be done also for nonlinear SOCs. And for linear SOCP, the way we do that is by a reduction approach. And this is as follows. You typically have, of course, your, your, your matrix here. You identify your rank, of course, and you can construct a matrix E star, which is a matrix whose column are, are uh, uh, eigen basis and also non eigen basis of the kernel of the uh, of the of G of the matrix G of ethical star, right? So it's also normal. So you have this kind of properties, right? E star transpose is eta E star is the entry, right? You, if you start, you, you fix one one uh, one uh, uh, orthonormal in basis of the kernel, you consume this matrix E star. And then you construct a smooth function, actually it's analytic, or sorry, it's as smooth as G, it's as smooth as G, if G is analytic, E is analytic, if G is one, E is one. And typically what you do is to compose, to apply the projection, the projection onto the A space as it with the M minus R, the smallest A values of G of X, here we cannot, we cannot talk about kernel because uh, G of X is not clearly, uh, uh, has not the, the kernel has not the same dimension of G of X star. But we can talk about the M minus R as smallest well values because M minus R uh, is, uh, is the dimension of the kernel. And it is well known, it is known from theory of matrix analysis that this projection is a smooth huh? if you work with the same in that dimension. Uh, you apply it to E star and then you compute, you use Graham Smith to obtain uh, columns of this matrix E of X that are orthonormal, right? Uh, and Graham Smith, Graham Smith, of course, is a, is a smooth procedure, so this is a smooth function. And so what we have is that for every point close in a neighborhood of X star, you can locally analyze the visibility G of X of its definite via this new function, which is E, the function we had defined before, G and E. But this is a, a smaller dimension now. It's the same dimension of the kernel of G of X star. So somehow, morally speaking, it's like to work with active constraint in non natural. Of course, the construction is more involving, but, but morally speaking, is that. And in particular, we have that, since we have that this is constructed in such a way that E of X star is equal to star, we have that in this uh, reduce, in this reduce, oh my gosh, sorry, in this, in this reduce uh, constraint, we, we have that we are working in the vertex. It's another very important uh, property that is, is used for computation uh, 
uh, of uh, some sets and um, we can take advantage of that, but I'm not going to talk about that here. I'm gonna just say that this is the proper, more involved, but proper extension of, 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 uh, of working with uh, active constraint in linear programming. In this case, of course, apply to nonlinear SDP. So we can construct this function G, and now the natural extension is to say that for this extension, for this function G, we are going to ask that for every phase of the, now not the, the, the positive octal of force, but the, the, the set of semi-definite, the positive semi-definite matrices, of course, for every phase, we compute the same object and the dimension should remain constant in a neighborhood of the point is star, right? It's somehow the same geometric definition than before, but we have re replaced semi-definite, positive semi-definite uh, matrices set. Uh, we have replaced that, uh, uh, we use that instead of positive all constant, and we have constructed this function capital G in a very smart way. Okay, that's the definition. And of course, we have tried to convince people that it's a good definition. It's definitely analog to, to our characterization, the characterization of the uh, And the question that we, we, can, we, can, we can say, okay, this, uh, we, we have called this facial constant rank. And, uh, and the question is, 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 actually, is actually our definition of, uh, of uh, is a good definition of extension of constant rank? The fair answer is no. But it's not because uh, it's not because it has no good properties. Actually, facial constant rank is enough to prove that tangent cone is equal to near, nearest tangent cone, which is the side property. But the problem here is that Abadi, in a general context, requires that condition, but also that this element is closed, and we don't have that for free. So uh, as in as in a nonlinear programming, right? Remember that for for conic programming and for SDP in particular, the the, the, the image of uh, the the image of the positive semi-definite uh, matrices uh, con by a linear mapping is not closed. So, uh, but in nonlinear programming, you use the fact that the the image of a polyhedra uh, by a linear mapping is closed. So you don't have this condition for free, and we need to assume it, and then we have our real life constant rank consequent equation condition for SDP, which is it has two parts. Let's say facial constant rank and the fact that this set is closed. And with that in mind, this is indeed, uh, of course, this is indeed uh, implies a body. This is implies a body. We have proved that. This imply a body, and so I have a D, we know that it's a secure for nonlinear SDP, so we are done. Right? Sorry, how much time I, I have? Because I, I just need to talk about second order condition, but I don't know if I have enough time. You have about this. 10 minutes, Victor. Ah, okay, 10, 10 minutes more than enough, because I just, uh, I, I was aware that it's a little bit technical and I have. Uh, I would like to explain everything without interpreting, so I will skip the proof by okay. focus. But but somehow I, I prefer to give the ideas, right? So constant rank in nonlinear programming has important properties uh, a, a regarding second order the study condition, and um, and that's also what we have able to prove here, right? Again, I'm just showing things for nonlinear SDP, but some things are easier or equally equally easy to write down in, in a general conic uh, framework. That's what I'm gonna do here. So first, let me remember, recall briefly that, that on the Robinson secure, and I will say other general assumptions that I'm not gonna invoke here, but they are, let's say, clearly they are always fulfilled for SOCP and SDB. Uh, we know that uh, uh, this condition here, Okay, this condition here is a second order necessary condition for optimality, right? That means that if the study is, opti is optimal, then this condition is fulfilled. 
how you read this condition. Well, this is uh, this goes back to '99. Uh, it's a work of Bonas Community Shapiro in this in this uh, conic framework. It was proved before uh, a similar con uh, same condition for Shapiro and SDP, but okay. we are I'm using here this report. Um, and how this read? How this is should be read? Uh, this is here uh, the the critical direction column, uh, the usual one, you know. Here you have what you expect. Huh? If you if you teach optimization, you know that this condition is an anisotropic condition. You know that you require that the soup of the all the Lagrange multiplier uh, of the Hessian of the Lagrangian is seventy uh, is is a is a positive. Uh, uh, quadratic, uh, uh, non negative, sorry, quadratic form for all the direction, uh, uh, critical direction, right? But the, uh, but the, 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 the extra ingredient here is this quadratic form A, H, which is uh, what is called in, 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 in coding programming the sigma term. I, I'm not going to talk too much about that, but this somehow helps you because it's a, this quadratic form is always non negative. Uh, actually, when k is a polyedra, this is zero. So you you recover the, the classical result of linear programming. Um, um, somehow here the, is defined via the, the super function, super function applied to lambda star, the super function to the what we call the second order tangent set. It's not a cone, it's a set at 2k as at s star direction h. Um, Please uh, avoid the details, but the idea here is this H becomes important, becomes important because, because it captures the, the curvature of the of the conic set. In this could be the, the SDP or the SLCP or other. Huh? Uh, and actually, this H, this term, this quadratic form can H can be explicitly written uh, in the case of SDP and SLCP. Right? Okay. We know that we know that is a, a known result. We know that this somehow is condition. Even for linear programming, you cannot do better on the Robinson or on the Fries and Fromovich. And it's somehow you have here, uh, uh, you have here, know that you have some quantifier. Right? If you call this Q of H, this condition is equivalent to say that for all H critical. There exists a multiplier such that Q of H is non negative, right? And we know that you can, there are contra examples, you cannot do better if you assume only bodies. However, it is not for linear programming that you, you can do better if you assume both and one. And we, are, we have obtained the same for conic programming. As I have said before, to be honest, it's just we have proven this only for SDP and SOCP. We believe it's also true for a general conic uh, uh, problem, but we have we are not able to prove that yet. Um, and what is the result? The result is following: if you have a feasible point that satisfy the constant rank with a constant rank CQ I defined before, then okay, this is already said. You know that you have uh, Lagrange uh, multipliers, but you have the following. A strong now second order condition, which says that this the quadratic form I mentioned before, huh? you you can somehow erase the soup, right? You have that is true for all multiplier and for all directions. This is strong, right? And actually, this is true because you can prove that the this quadratic form is invariant to the multiplier, right? So of course the soup is superfluous. Huh? So it's a stronger second order condition, which is not. Uh, I repeat, this is known for, for nonlinear programming, but to prove this in this case is, of course, more involving because you need to deal with this extra sigma there. And, but now, for how the theory, the theory is a, a proper extension because of both theory coincide. Okay. To summarize, uh, I, I'm, 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 we are very happy about with this condition, has, has very good properties. Uh, 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 first is the first time this this constant rank uh, or any of its variants receive a geometric interpretation. I repeat, even for nonlinear programming, as far as we know, and of course we use uh, 
uh, use that interpretation to for our extension. And as I said you before, it can, it can use uh, it uses a uh, uh, sorry it uses uh, a stronger uh, second order optimality condition. It's of course this is strictly weaker as for sure than my acid is that we uh, we expected. Also, as we expected, is is completely independent. We have contra example for one side another is completely independent of Robinson. Uh, for the sake of time and, and I'm aware that's a very technical my my call. So if I also put in a SLCP result, it could be very difficult to follow. So I just tell you you can you should you can believe me and, and check the papers that are submitted. We you can also construct in a similar way. Uh, the, the this condition and prove the same result for nonlinear secondary programming. Um, very interesting, but not done yet because it's not that easy. <laughs> is that you can extend since we have we have a good guess. Uh, 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 you can extend this constant rescue to a general conic programming. Uh, possibly you need to assume some properties such as uh, reducibility. But anyway, uh, uh, it could be extended to the conic programming, but uh, we have somehow the ingredients, but we have not proven that it's happening. That has been more involving than we expected. Huh? Um, and to conclude, uh, here I'm just uh, provide you what are the, the panorama and some gaps that we have as we have in, in, in our work. Here I, I, in this talk, I have just talked about non-deniacy, Robinson, Metis I didn't mention, but maybe you know what it is, naive and facial, right? Uh, I didn't talk about sequential, and I didn't talk about the variation of this condition with CPMD, constant positive media dependence, okay? So, but anyway, we, we have a very nice panorama of our condition. We can locate, locate uh, naive here and, and naive here, which is actually weak, strictly weaker than sequential. Facial is not so easy to relate to the others, but it's located where we expected, let's say, uh, let's say uh, under Nancy and independent of Robinson. Unfortunately, we believe that is true, but we are not able to prove and neither this car that is stronger than medicine reality with spectra, right? It's not to expect that is uh, strictly stronger, stronger than that. Uh, and actually, we are able to prove that sequential uh, is a strictly uh, sequential CPLD, okay, but it's strictly, it's, it's, sorry, it's a stronger, but we are not able to prove that it's strictly stronger than the medicine reality. And that's more or less the panorama we have. So we are still some open question, but we have at least three uh, extensions, uh, one naive, another two more, more involving of, of, of constant run. All of them have pro and cons, so they are not clear to us that what is the, the best one. Uh, I would like to introduce you uh, in this talk, the facial one, because it has this geometric intimidation, which is very beautiful, even for nonlinear programming. And that's it. Uh, I finish with some reference. Uh, the two papers that are, uh, uh, first are already, let's say, published. Uh, the Raton, of course, uh, and, the, and, the, and the naive uh, proper, uh, paper. And then uh, we have some related work uh, regarding non-energy, which is submitted. And the other three are submitted. Uh, all of them are in different stage of, 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 of of reviewers for review. Um, you can check, of course, uh, uh, there are many results there, some of them regarding algorithms, some of them regarding uh, optimality conditions. Um, you can check details and proof there. And I just can say that thank you very much for the for your attention today. Thank you. Thank you, Hector, for your very nice presentation, combining classical stuff with not so classical, but uh, with close connections with classics, which is always good. My apologies to the speaker and to the audience. I forgot to turn on the recording in the beginning. I did it only in the middle of the talk.
which means that actor at some stage will have to come again and <laughs> to us about all these things. Uh, before we go to the discussion, I, I want to say that uh, I'm very pleased to see that the contribution of Leonid Minchenko has been acknowledged in this presentation, which uh, doesn't always happen. Uh, it so happened that Leonid Minchenko, I don't know whether you are aware of that, he, he passed away about two weeks ago. Oh, okay. Uh, so anyway, oh. discussion, questions, please, questions, comments, just unmute yourself and ask or start talking, please. So I don't see brave speakers appearing immediately. Hopefully some will ripen in a few minutes. Uh, continuing the terminology in this uh, presentation, I like this uh, naive uh, topic. Uh, I, I have a couple of very naive questions, Hector. Mm -hmm. Please, okay. Uh, this uh, topic of constraint qualifications, it's, uh, it's a very old topic, obviously, and it was indeed very, very popular in the 1970s, 1980s. Then the interest somehow subsided, and now we witnessed an we witness an explosion of uh, interest again to constraint qualifications. Can you explain the reason why it happens so? Good. Uh, I I uh, okay. In my case, uh, uh, I think I think the interest uh, what I have. Okay, it's a good question because I don't feel so. My wisdom is not that that uh, big to. To, to, to consider that the answer is definitive. But what I have seen, what I have seen is that the applications or where you, you, where you, where you consider new type of problems, uh, 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 you find that uh, some constraint qualification are not longer, let's say, interesting or, or, or useful. And you need to think about uh, new ones or, or, or to modify the existing one. Uh, for instance, you see, you clearly see that when when you work with a conic, uh, with a with a abstract optimization problem, as I present here, but when the the set K is not convex, for instance, you have there are some work of uh, of of some out of Freire uh, that that they somehow indirectly work with conditions, uh, uh, some of them in situ. That are not uh, that are appropriate for those examples, and they moreover have application to B-level programming or 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 mathematical problem with equilibrium constraint, where you cannot write. I hope you follow me. Let me change the problem in the very beginning. Uh, uh, you cannot write the problem like this. Just excuse me. I'm gonna write quickly. I guess you cannot write the problem like this, like P here, right? But with K, uh, uh, it was at the very beginning, that's a pity. Um, <laughs> like here. You cannot, program, you cannot write the problem like here, but with K convex, for example. That's the case of, uh, uh, right? That's the, that's the case uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, let's say, the uh, linear constraint, for instance, right? It's not, it's, not, it's not clear you can write like this. Huh? Uh, uh, and, and, and of course, with, with that convex K. And so you have some, some I will say, um, uh, new, I don't know if new, but some problems, type of problems, even conic is one of them, uh, convex conic problems, that are more involved in terms of, 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 uh, of constraint qualification condition. And, and the usual ones are, are not, are not uh, used, I, I don't even from film. We know that. Uh, this kind of uh, as a form of Robinson condition is never fulfilled for for a level optimization. So uh, so uh, for a sorry for a for an MPEG. So you need to think in other way to to work with those problems. That's what I think uh, people are now uh, studying uh, new ideas, directional, secure, this kind of thing, right? Um, 
Yeah, that's an answer I can give you. Huh? There are new, sorry, I know the word news is, is appropriated. There are problems that now has a lot of attention and need some, uh, and need some new secures or need to modify existing secure to be useful. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you, Hector. Uh, to to continue on this topic, uh, I have a vague feeling that, uh, of course, in the beginning of all these things, uh, all 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 this topic comes from optimization, and of course, constraint qualifications are uh, very important from the optimization point of view. Uh, but gradually, people started actually observing that more or less the same conditions, they appear in other areas, broader than just optimization. And these conditions actually emphasize some fundamental properties of functions, mapping, sets, etc. And even in terms of terminology, instead of saying constraint qualification, people now more and more often write qualification conditions without mm -hmm. referring to constraints. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, a very naive observation, maybe even these conditions presented today uh, could have a broader meaning, uh, uh, not related directly with optimization. So just a, an observation, nothing else. Um, I, I'm recalling, I, I, I'm forgetting, <laughs> I'm afraid to forget uh, something important. Uh, coming back to Leonid Minchenko, uh, you actor referred to his paper with Stachowski of uh, uh, 2011. Uh, I just know that, uh, in, in fact, the condition itself appeared a year earlier in 2010. Okay. But uh, the paper is in Russian. Stachowski is uh, ah, okay. an student, okay. PhD student. Okay. So uh, if, if you're interested or if uh, you want to start studying Russian, I have a copy of this <laughs> paper somewhere on my computer. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe I, can, I can still improve my English before studying Russian, right? <laughs> ah, in, in fact, a, a funny story. Uh, when one of these papers, or maybe another, was published in an English journal with a reference to that paper in Russian, one of the reviewers actually uh, requested an English translation of that <laughs> first Russian paper. Uh, one more very nice question, if I can. Uh, in terms of terminology, conic programming. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, people started observing that instead of uh, traditional cones like R and plus, mm -hmm. uh, in, in all these topics, more general cones uh, could be used. Uh, but, uh, and, and plenty of publications in the 1970s, 80s, uh, with people using some cones, but uh, the terminology coning programming came into life later. C can, mm. can you approximately say when it happened? When did oh, people start talking about conic programming? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. I, okay, I will say that with, when they all did, uh, it's a good question because somehow I was born when coning programming was already born as a mathematician. Right? Uh, when coding programming was already uh, very used, right? And in my opinion, it was very uh, confused somehow. I used for, with, together with SDP, right? With semi definite coding programming, somehow, semi definite programming uh, as a particular mm -hmm. case, and in, in particular with linear. Actually, I, I, all, I, my, my research is normally oriented to non-linear, right? Because somehow I, 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 really, I try to extend some properties or characterize stability properties that are more interested in non-linear context, but people actually, uh, in many cases, just call conic programming to linear conic programming, and typically they refer to SDP or SOCP somehow, right? So I, 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 I'm not very sure about my answer, but I will say, I will say that is with the, with the, with the, when the 
the lean SDP and lean SSP become very important in a moment, I would say 20 years ago, or maybe more now, uh, uh, because of the application of those products, the paper start to talk about conic programming. Right. I, I, I think in the 2000s, uh, definitely mm -hmm. this terminology was already in use. So it's mm -hmm. about 20 years at least. I'm mm -hmm. not sure whether it was used in the 1990s. Yes, yes, yes. Well, the, the, the paper of Guman is very important for, for, for as an application of SDP to, 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 so to the max cut program, I think. It was in 98, right? Mm. So close to 2000. Yeah, close to 2000. Okay, good. Uh, so do we have... regarding, regarding to your observation, let me, let me if I can, uh, Alex, uh, try to, to say something back. Uh, uh, it's very interesting that you, you're right. Some conditions can be, can, be, can be studied also, for instance, in terms of intersection of sets or other, other type of, or the most function. It's, and it's very interesting. I think there's a there is a possibility to do, to do research there, but note that in particular for constant rank, what we had before for how these results were very related to the structure of inequalities. Right? You can somehow for, forget inequalities, and you have inequalities, and you somehow check some subset of of uh, of the active constraint and check the rank of the gradients. But it was very, very associated to the structure of inequalities. Now, now I think we are closer I don't know, to say something more general, right? It's not the case of of of, of non non NRC or LACQ, let's say, or Robinson, where you have another way to write it down in terms of set, and then you can somehow uh, study in an abstract form. Huh? You have, but for constant run before the results I show, the facial one, it was not that easy to think in terms of, 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 of uh, or in, in my opinion, my humble opinion, it was not that easy to, to, to study in terms of sets, for instance. Right? And these definitions explicitly involve functions and specifically okay. differentiable functions, if it is about... And inequalities, and inequalities. Yes. It was yes. A, a very, very explicit, yeah. yeah. Now, now we can talk about faces, for instance. Now, right? Yeah. Uh, okay, we spent quite a bit of time talking about naive things. Do we have non-naive questions from the audience? Naive questions are also allowed. <laughs> Please. So if not, Thank you very much again, Hector, for your very nice presentation. I'm really pleased to get back to things which I know more or less, or at least some portions of which I'm aware of. I, I hope you, you will keep coming to our seminars and also as a presenter. Just let us know when you are willing to present something else. I hope so. Oh, okay, soon. So next week? <laughs> no, not that soon. Yeah, I'm afraid <laughs> next week is already taken. And yeah. by the way, uh, for the audience, uh, next week we do have a talk, but in our regular Australian time in the evening, five o'clock Australian time. Sorry for representatives from the Americas. The time, the, our regular time is not very convenient, definitely. Chile or the United States. So, uh, thanks again, Ekta, for coming. Thanks to Thank everybody for attending. And uh, see you next week or the following week. And uh, Ekta, please volunteer to give your next talk. Thank you, Ekta. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Alex. Regards to all common friends in Santiago. Thank you, Hector. Thank you, Hector. Bye, bye. Un abrazo. Un abrazo, que estén bien. Gracias, vos también. Gracias, gracias, Hector. <laughs>